Hey, I'm going to do a trigger warning for this video because I put my contacts in on camera. I didn't edit it out. And then also, um, you're going to notice like two times in the video that I freeze up because I heard booming in the distance. We do live next to chemical plants, so that's always like a looming threat in the background of my mind. And I also thought maybe it was like rail carts derailing or something like that, but it was thunder. And so you'll notice I freeze up two times in this video. I'm so sorry. Um, it's a very long one. It's very annoying, very on brand for me. But anyways, yes, I do put my contacts in on camera. So trigger warning, eye pulling, contact inserting. And yeah, um, also I freeze up because I got scared that maybe something had gone boom. And uh, that's always, like I said, a looming threat, right? But anyways, it, it was fine. It was just thunder. So okay, goodbye. So anyways, hi. So anyways, I, um, I'm going to be doing my mascara on camera. Um, I just cleaned out my contacts and I am so excited to try to put them in. I should have put them in before I put my mascara on. I'm just going to do a little bit and then I'll try to put them in. I just cleaned out my contacts. I'm going to clean out my eyes. And then uh, I'm going to see if they are going to fucking kill me or not. You know what I mean? Like, it's just a little test. It's just a little test. Um, I accidentally went off earlier because I got mad. Um, and I need to just calm down. <laughs> I just need to calm down. Um, my best friend today messaged me and told me about this beautiful astrological book that I'm going to go hunt down now. Let me try to get the... How do I get the, the shiny in my eyes? My friend, she messaged me um, a picture of this book. I'm going to go hunt down because I love collecting astrological books. I'm an astrologer if you don't know this. But I don't do it often. And I've been on the news twice. I've been on the news twice. Um, so I'm really grateful for that experience. Um, and I am so happy because I love doing astrology. I love doing it for free. And I used to get in trouble when I worked at a metaphysical shop because of that. I used to give out free astrological reports to everybody that walked in because I was so good and I could do it like that. Very quick, very accurate, very demure. <laughs> demure. Um, but yeah, so anyways, really good at astrology and i used to have a like i do i did a little podcast thing with my friend because she's also a fantastic astrologer and i love her so much um but unfortunately i got hit with you know the depression and i stopped doing astrology because my my plate was so full of things that made me depressed that i gave up on a lot of the things i loved in life but there is a quote and i'm going to butcher it and it was like, when you love something, such as astrology, painting, skating, your friends, real friends, real friends, um, you could leave it, you could put it down. And when you come back to that part of yourself, it'll still be there waiting for you. When you truly love something, it's okay to walk away from like the hobby, the activity, the obsession. And then come back later on and it'll still be there waiting for you. You know what I mean? So anyways, that's what astrology is to me and for me. It's something that has... What was that sound? I don't know what that sound was. It sounded like thunder, but it also sounded like real carts smashing. I don't see any clouds that would give rain. I'm sorry. And I also have like, I have OCD. So now I'm a little worried. Now I have been awoken. A dragon inside of me has awoken. And I have to find out what that sound was. I don't know what that sound is. If I hear it again, I'll probably start screaming. That was a very loud sound. <laughs> oh my god. 
I am excited for Nosferatu. Very excited. Overly excited. Why did I think of that? Oh, because I was thinking about Renfield. I was like, God damn, bitch. You're, you're giving Renfield. You're giving... I'm giving Renfield. I'm giving... What you get for an order? Here's an order. Eat the contacts. Eat the contacts. <laughs> Just kidding. You know, what do they call it? They call it the... um. What is that called? Whenever you try to eat something and it's not edible, they call it the forbidden. Eat the forbidden cookie. Eat the forbidden cookie. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm so scared because I haven't used these contacts in a while. And I cleaned them out and they look fine. They look okay. They look, they look edible. They look fine. They look okay. I'm just scared. I, w I went to Spirit Halloween and some girl gave me flack. She was like, I like your contacts. You know, like some girls like really rude. Like, for no reason, they're just, like, a total fucking Regina George to you. And she's like, I like your contacts. I was like, thanks. I got them off of blah, blah, blah. And she was like, aren't you scared you're going to lose your eyes? I wouldn't buy them from them. I'd be too scared. And I was like, why are you treating me like this? Because, like, I'm on the spectrum. And so I was like, why are you doing this to me? I was like, I thought we were friends. Because you said I was pretty. And I was going to say you were pretty. Who are you? And so she was like, aren't you afraid of losing, like, your vision? Aren't you afraid of going blind? And I was like, bitch, can you just check me out if you're going to have a fucking ratty ass attitude? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I went from like, oh my god, thank you so much, to being like, who the fuck do you think you are? And first of all, nobody fucking asked for your fucking opinion. <laughs> I'm just kidding. She was so rude, though, about it. And she was just like, have a great day. And I was like, thanks, whore. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just kidding. No, but what the fuck? Like, I don't know. I don't know. Because sometimes I'll be in, like, my country western garb. Sometimes I'll be wearing my flares and I have my big black hat on. And people get all, like, at me and I'm like to you bitch who the fuck do you think you are honey you obviously don't know who I am I'm a menace <laughs> maybe you don't know my official name it's uh, Lucifer slut maybe you don't remember who I am <laughs> just kidding second layer of hell there I am open mouth kissing <laughs> I'm just kidding no but it's just crazy because I don't know like when I was in high school right and I had like these friends that were like I don't know they weren't friends <laughs> uh they were just total fucking bitches anyways there was these girls and they were supposed to be like super like popular because you know being goth and seen and like alternative was super like happening there's a sound again let's pray Let's pray. It's just dropping corpses on the local churches. I just put these in my eyes. They are eye drops. I just put them in my eye. You know what I mean? Off camera. While I was having a miniature mental breakdown. Over sounds. I'm normal. I'm a total no normal human being. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm completely fine. Uh, anyways. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm talking about. It's like, golly. So we're going to try to put these contacts in our eyes. And we're going to pray to the Lord of all lords. I'm going to pray to all the lords that they don't fuck my eye up. And also, fuck you, girl. From fucking spirit home. You fucking meanie. Fucking rude. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I hope I'm doing this correctly. I don't know. We'll see. Should I do this on camera? Let's see if I'm blind. And if I do become blind, I'll just be like Odin. Maybe I have to wear an eye patch. I'll be a pirate. I got these from the <laughs> from a local mall. 
here and they order them from Korea because apparently the FDA does not approve colored contacts in the states. I'm just going to call it the states. In the states where I live, the FDA doesn't approve colored contacts. So they have to ship them in from like Korea. Uh, <laughs> I think that's super bizarre, but I don't judge. So think we're okay if I am blind tomorrow please 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 have somebody come and do my makeup <laughs> for me <laughs> I'm gonna start looking like those jesters from the renaissance time period okay okay Ooh. anyways 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 yesterday I got a drink from the store and it tasted weird it tasted really weird um, and I was very concerned about it. Very concerned. Sorry. Very concerned about the drink I got from the store because one, it led to vomiting. Um, it was a, uh, latte, like an iced latte, but, uh, it tasted like pharmaceuticals and it didn't taste like a latte. And so I'll never go back to that place again. Um, yeah, it was very, very, very scary. And I felt high and drunk all night. Like I was like roofied or something. And I'm scared. Oh, I was scared. I'm not scared anymore. It's passed through. But you know, like on games when you get poisoned? That's what it felt like. It felt like I got poisoned. Um, and it fucking fucked me up really bad. It scared the shit out of me. And I'll never go back to there again. It was at Bucky's. <laughs> and the girl's super fucking rude to me. And now thinking back, I'm like, did you fucking poison me, slut? <laughs> oh my god. I'm not trying to leave yet. Golly. Let's see how this goes. I'm sorry if that freaked you guys out. I'll probably put a trigger warning somewhere in this video before I show you guys me sticking my finger in my eye. For all the people who can't handle that. Um. Yeah, so yesterday there was a vomiting spell. I was wandering around dizzy, uh, fucking near fainting. I felt short and wide. You know how those memes are back in the, like, they call them, like, BK people, where they're, like, short and wide. Like, they edit it to make it look like that, right? So, that's what I felt like. And I was very confused. I was, like, I, I was, like, stumbling around, kind of like I was drunk. But, um, I don't, I was so scared. I was, like, man, what if they put, like, something in there that could kill me? I don't know. And I was, like, was that really that why would she do that why would the girl do that and I was trying not to let my brain do its thing but I was very uh sick and vomity and it was directly after ingesting that latte so yeah it was scary I'm just rewetting my eyeballs off camera because, um, just to make sure that I'm okay. For sure. I'm really excited about Nosferatu coming out. I'm really excited. Um, I think it's horseshit how Nosferatu got its beginning, ripping off, um, Bram's shit, you know? And also, I need to go ahead and, I need to go ahead and, um, do some research because, look, I've read Dracula. Okay, I've read Dracula. I've read Dracula. I don't know if you know this, but I have a whole Dracula collection. I collect Dracula things. Um, this is one of the things I do. And on top of being annoying, that's one of the things I do. And um, so I've read Dracula. And nowhere in Dracula did he ever say, I've crossed oceans of time. To find you. Nowhere in that book, I believe, in my hardest of hearts, did he say that to Mina. In fact, he uses Mina in the book. In the movie, it's like romanticized. You know what I mean? The whole interaction. But in the book, I don't think Dracula says a goddamn word that I can remember. And I'll have to go back and reread it again. Um, 
but he doesn't say that in the book. And so I think that's something they added into the movie. And then I don't know, I don't know, it's starting to upset me because I'm, I'm like, is this one of those Mandela things or is this just like a thing that people heard it in the movie and they never read the book and so now they're thinking that he says it in the book. I don't know. I don't know. But, uh, in the book, Dracula is a completely different beast. He's a completely different character. He's very, um, in the movie, he's like, oh. and in the book, it's more like he's like obviously using people to meet his needs, like to meet an end, ends meet, ends meet, ends meet, meet ends, whatever. So he's using people, obviously, and you can, t you can see that through the journal entries of everybody. You can see that it's just to try to get a goal accomplished, kind of like a narcissist. But um, we have a whole group of codependents hanging out and like going on. Like in the book, it's like super badass, super friends who have been abused by this narcissistic piece of shit. And they're gonna go gang together. They, they write in one book all together their fucking shit. Like in the book, it's a bunch of homies that come together under sad circumstances and form this league of people who have been like fucked over by Dracula essentially and he's like picking them off one by one but when they come together as a group they find that there is a community in unity right <laughs> and so they all write the things down and they all let each other read each other's diaries it's a very intimate interaction with Van Helsing and Jonathan and Mina and everybody like just coming together and reading each other's personal words and diaries and crying and there's a lot of camaraderie uh, involved but in the movie it's a completely different thing right because it's the director's interpretation of the book and so it's not like the book it's not like it at all um, but there was one thing about Bram is that he was fucking around with the Golden Dawn, um, uh, the writer. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm just probably, this is a fucking niche amount of people I'm talking to. So he was fucking around with people who were in the Golden Dawn. And he also had like this baddie little crush, kind of like bisexual thing going on with a boy in the theater company who actually was a complete fucking narcissist and he had these compulsive dreams i believe i believe i could be watching this go do your own research as always but he has these compulsive dreams about being devoured by a gigantic crab i believe and like just this, this like overwhelming sensation of being devoured um the more he was like attracted to this boy and the more he was like pulled in by the presence of Maybe perhaps like that thing where it's like two guys are hanging out and then he's starting to understand that he actually does love and enjoy this kind of affection and attention and partnership and friendship that it becomes something else in his brain and he doesn't realize like, oh, holy shit, I might be queer, right? Um, and maybe he even like does a little bit of whatever because allegedly he ended up contracting I believe allegedly some kind of STD perhaps syphilis right and so he starts having like these interactions with these people and like moving away from like his marriage his like you know nuclear family thing where it's like a woman and a man and la 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 and he starts pulling away into like his emotions and his ties into like this other stuff and like I said like having passing interactions with people from the golden dawn and um that was a whole kind of strange <laughs> thing uh i don't know i wasn't there nobody was there it's like the people who are there know but the people who read about it years later are like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. happy pride month baby happy pride month i'll see you at the parade baby so then it's so crazy. It's so crazy because like the book's different, right? His real life was different. And then there's all these other things that are very insane and like many different levels of the whole Dracula universe. So we have the man, the myth, the legend, Vlad, right? Who was an actual being. And um, the time period that he grew up in and lived in, it was 
his actions were warranted and normal. There was also another person around that time period who used to like take out his enemies or his people that were committing treason and put them on display in his parlor and then invite all his other like comrades over and they would eat dinner while everybody's bodies were on display and you're just like it was such a fucking power move to be like and here is this stupid bitch who thought they had one over on me but look isn't it funny how is your duck is it good you know like <laughs> i'm obsessed like yes <laughs> if i could i would <laughs> okay but i can't so but in the 1400s that was just the thing they did they were very barbaric considering today's stuff like you can't do that you can't just like put your that your enemies on display and invite everybody over for a casual dinner and then um go about your business and be like and if you fuck up and if i find out you're fucking up i have a spot right next to reggie <laughs> waiting for you you know what i mean so um that's just how it was. So people were like, oh my God, he was like impaling people. Ah, you know, it was just the times, honey. The times were different. And uh, it was wartime. And not only wartime, it was conquering time. It wasn't even a war time. It was a different, it was conquering time. It was absolute obliteration from like, it was like Islamic versus Christianity versus Catholic. And even Christianity and Catholic for a very long time had issues with each other, which is insane to me because I'm like, you're all Abrahamic. You're all Abrahamic. Shut the fuck up. Shut up. Shut up. Abraham is God. Shut up. <laughs> like, that's insane to me. That is bozo mode. Like, it's, as somebody who's, like, been a part of the church and been brainwashed and had to wring out my brain and wash it myself in bleach. After surviving and overcoming and getting therapy <laughs> for being, like, psychologically abused by the Abrahamic faith, you start looking around and you go, who fucking cares? Shut the fuck up. You really don't know. You really don't know. And you're sitting there knocking people over, bulldozing whole societies down for something you assume is maybe real, perhaps, but you don't know. It's fucking weird. It's kind of suspicious, right? How about you guys just go eat a donut and like experience life? Go on a walk. Read a book. <laughs> like <laughs> visit old castles no you gotta you gotta go do your man thing anyways anyways i don't know where i was so anyways so we have vlad and his life okay and then you have the fictional universe that is dracula right so then you have fictional vlad which could be bram's fucking signature trying to sort his own emotional turmoil out with perhaps realizing he could be queer but he's married to this girl and there's societal expectations and back then that wasn't really fucking like accepted so you have all of these very 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 horrific things happening in his universe so he like latches on to like vlad the impaler right and creates this fictional universe where he can work out his own things in his own way via the book Dracula, right? But then, but wait, there's more. So then we have <laughs> the descendants of Vlad the Impaler, right? And Radu, his brother. We have them going on these fucking extensive hunts for their ancestry and realizing that in the book Dracula, when you read the articles of how long it took Jonathan Harker to get from one place to another and the food he was eating at certain stops, you realize it was all historically accurate for that time period. But you could still go to those places and take a train and make that time to this day. Um, I think I have that book somewhere in here. It's like Dracula, the Prince of Many Faces that's written by one of his like descendants right his legitimate descendants and ironically uh i believe the author of the book was married to one of the or at one point was married to one of the um or his one of his brothers or sons or something anyways there's a connection to houston because he's married to the news anchor girl dominique 
And so I thought that was super cool. I was like, no way. It was like a, all the way from back to like <laughs> ancient Eastern Europe, we have now a connection to Houston, Texas via marriage and stuff. I think that's ironic and interesting. Anyway, so we have like real, fictional, but then in between the real and the fiction, there is actual legitimate, interesting, butt scratching happening. Um, <laughs> so that's, to me, that's crazy, right? It's, it's just interesting to see like you had the reality of, you know, what was going on with the 1400s, right? And then you have the fiction of Dracula written by this Irish man who was fucking around with like dudes and perhaps catching STDs and losing his mind and also interacting with the Golden Dawn people. Um, and it's just so crazy. You know what I mean? It's so crazy. But then, like I said, so the descendants of Vlad, or Radu, right? The descendants of them actually hunt down the facts within the fiction that is Dracula and find out that it does in fact take that certain amount of time on a train to get to that place and you can still order that meal at that same spot that Jonathan Harker stops at in his travels at that place and so it's just interesting because it makes you go wow he must have I think one of the things they talk about one of the things they talk about in the book Dracula the Prince of Many Faces is the legitimate history the fiction and everything in between and it's super super scholarly super good read it's very thick very good very delicious for people who love just information information gobblers like me um yeah so if you're up that way and you are into things of that nature you would enjoy that book so yeah I think it's so it's, it's bizarre and amazing and immaculate. And I could go on for hours and hours. But then we go to Nosferatu. How did Nosferatu get made? Well, they fucking ripped off Dracula, got into a lawsuit with Bram's wife after he passed, and she was pissed as hell because, yeah, look, man, he kind of, like, fucked her over and was, like, cheating on her. And who knows if he passed on his STDs to his wife. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's such an interesting thing as well. Like, we have these... What society expects you to do and you know you're supposed to be a man and you're supposed to be married and you're supposed to act a certain way and then you have how you feel and like what you want and what you desire and that is different than what is socially acceptable so you have these two conflicting ambivalent i love the word ambivalence just ambivalent emotions that are just tormenting you as a human being it's so weird being a human is so strange and i'll never be able to um cope with it in a way that is like not constantly sorting out the tangles and the hair that is the history of humans it is insane it is absolutely bonkers being a person is fucked up being an american is even worse <laughs> and then coming being a texan is even worse and i find that hilarious too because um and they're, they're like oh what's that and she's like that's a texan honey i'm a texan and yeah, I have a Bowie knife too. I have a really big Bowie knife too. Um, I inherited it from my mom after she passed. She gave me her giant like fucking Bowie knife. I digress. We're moving on from that. So yeah, <laughs> I, I have a Stetson hat and a giant Bowie knife. So I guess I am a Texan. You get them when you're born. It just, it's, I'm sorry. I just think you get one when you're born. So. What did we learn today? Absolutely nothing, except that I have a problem with yapping. I have an obsession with Dracula, history, and everything in between. I actually, I love the occult. I have a lot of stuff. A lot of books on the occult, manly pee hole, everything. I have a very, I have like, I've spent thousands of dollars on different occult books. I have plaques from uh, the Splendor de Soleil, the uh, alchemical texts, and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, I love it. In fact, as my coffee table books, I have like astro astrological magazines from the 1980s and 1990s. I have the uh, <laughs> Emerald Tablet, <laughs> my Hermes Trismegistus, and then like I just have a bunch of things all around my house. I have statues of gods and deities. I have crystals. I have all kinds of stuff. I used to be a night manager at a metaphysical shop, and I am an astrologer, but... 
at heart, what am I? A fucking menace to everyone, including myself. So I will see you guys later. I'm so sorry. I hope you guys have a great day. Treat each other well. I'm not blind yet. I'm not blind yet. So yeah. And if you like this type of deal, this type of 24 hour lip thing, um, let me show you what I bought real quick before I go. I can't find my red one. I have one in this color. It's like the same color. It's a nude thing. <laughs> Sorry. So this is, um, <laughs> my husband needed a towel. So this is what I use. It's the, the Super Stay 24 lip color by Maybelline New York. Maybe she's more, more than the maybe it's of my little life. This is what I use, but I use it in that red color, which I have, I've lost. I've lost it. Let me find it real quick. Hold on. I found it. <laughs> so, isn't this so funny? These are like my colors. That's so weird. This is literally, <laughs> this is this weird. Anyways, um, so the color, the shade is, I can't read. Let me find my glasses. This shade is Everlasting Wine. I'm gonna cry. I'm not even kidding. This shade is everlasting wine. Unfortunately, it's not everlasting. It's running out. So, and, 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 and I have to use this part, this, this part on this one because I don't use this as often. Uh, it, this runs out very quickly. This right here, it's dirty. This runs out very quickly. The little, um, 24 thing. It runs out everlasting. <clears throat> I can't handle it. Everlasting wine. Make sure you serve that at my funeral. Everlasting wine. Oh my god. I love that. Okay. And then my cheeks today. My cheeks. A little bit of elf. Literally the tiniest drop. The tiniest drop. No foundation. No primer. Nothing. Just complete freckled face. <laughs> fucking freckles oh god these are not fake freckles this is what i look like did you know my best friend growing up didn't know i had freckles because i used to hide them all the time i used to get the like whitest the whitest foundation and i would put it i'm sorry i'm, I'm ugly up close i'm so sorry but you're gonna need to look at it so i used to uh really 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 pack on the um the foundation and I would sleep in my makeup because I didn't want anyone knowing I had freckles. I was so embarrassed. And it was such an ugly thing growing up. Like, people were so fucking mean to girls with freckles growing up. And she finally found out that I had freckles as an adult. As a 30-year-old. I knew her when I was 14. Yeah, so. Anyways, so. I put literally the babiest, the babiest amount of this on my cheeks and I do it in a like a three dot like like this like a one two three the tiniest pin pin dot tiniest pin dot and then it, it will literally just it's so much this can last probably an entire lifetime and this is the um shade stinky malinky no I'm kidding this is a shade god damn it hold it <laughs> I, I, I'm blind hold up coming in hot pink not everlasting wine not as not as good elf get a better name maker what would i call this i'd call it pink phony pink <laughs> I'm, I'm obsessed with chapel Run. i'm obsessed i don't know if you guys know i love her i love her so much okay i will see you guys later that's what I'm wearing today. I am wearing the Maybelline 24 Hours Stay Everlasting Wine Coming in Pink. Fuck, get a better name. Elf, come on. And then, of course, my waterproof mascara. And <laughs> these contacts I got from, like, a an Asian store uh, down the way. It's like an ethnic store. I don't know how to appropriately call it or what to call it, but that's just what everyone knows it as down here. Um, as it's like an Asian market and, um, 
they get them shipped in from Korea, but the name of these was Twilight. <laughs> they were Twilight, but they misspelled Twilight. So I'm going to call them Loka. They're Loka. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. I'm so sorry. I don't even know. I have to go. I have to go watch this video. I have to go edit this video. Why do I push record?